Hi and welcome to today's video. Today we've come to the most popular seaside resort in the UK. It outstrips all the others by a massive mile. Today we've come to Blackpool. This is the world's biggest mirror ball. It was made in 2002 and what you may not notice is over there, if you look over there, you'll see some lights and at night the glitter ball really glitters. It does now in the sun but when the night comes, wow. Now the Solaris, a cafe, is famous that wind generator at the top. Been there for years. Never actually been in there. Unfortunately today I won't be either. So let's continue and see what else there is to see at that pool. And that's just access opposite the mirror ball. One of the things that this path is classed as is the golden mile. And it literally, well, it's a bit more than a mile to walk along the seafront. One of the best beaches in the UK. When the sun dries, the tide is out, you can't beat it. And the other thing with Blackpool, it's got so many guest houses, hotels, and there's Hampton by Hilton there. You've got Premier Inn, you've got uh, Holiday Inn, Express is nearby, as you'll see from our other videos. But this area is just so fantastic for a nice gentle walk into the main area of Blackpool. I'm one of the biggest roller coasters in the world, and was the biggest at one point, tallest anyway, is this one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It used to be called the Pepsi Max. Quite a sight from a distance away as well. Blackpool Pleasure Beach is one of the original theme parks in the UK. It's over 125 years old. Another thing Blackpool's famous for is its trams along the seafront. Been going for generations. And we have a rare thing at Blackpool, the Believe It or Not by Ripley's, which they're all over the world, but there's not many of them left all full of unusual facts and things and if you hear that noise in the background that's our pug the microphone's picked it up a few times in the background it's not cheap to go into but uh, it's well worth it if you can spend the time one of the oldest rides in blackpool pleasure beach is in actual fact the ghost ride not this one here but there's a ghost train inside and some people have noted feeling fingers on their head because it's actually haunted. This is one of my favourite shops in Blackpool, full of Doctor Who, Star Trek, all the sort of sci-fi memorabilia that you could possibly want. I mean, it literally has everything in here. What I do notice in this shop is there's lots of things that perhaps you remember from your childhood as well. Not necessarily new sci-fi. Some of the items are real collector's items. And it leads through into a normal seafront shop. You've also got the water park. Now, they call it the sandcastle and it's right on the seafront. 
uh, you actually can go into one of the slides and it goes outside. It's a fantastic little place. Uh, it's been around for a few years now. It's got restaurants inside. It's got everything you could possibly want. Imagine it's a rainy day. You've come to Blackpool, spent a week in Blackpool, somewhere to go to. Now, this is the South Pier. I'm going to go through the piers as we walk along because each of them have got their own personality. It's very unusual to have three piers in one resort. Uh, if you've watched any of the videos about Yorkshire, you'll understand that in Yorkshire there are no piers because they've been destroyed over the years. You find that in a number of places. But with this, it, South Pier, it's more just of a theme park, if you like, over the sea. And in the distance there, you can see the other pier. But as I said, this is more of when you go on, there's things to do, shops, what you'd expect on the seafront, but it just happens to be over the pier, uh, on the pier itself, should I say. And that's the Sandcastle, that blue building. The pier, you've got what our classes, your fun fair. Right, we're coming on to the second pier now, central pier. And as you can see in the distance, going very, very prominent, is Blackpool Tower. But in between second pier, the central pier, and South Bay Pier, is hotels, after hotels, after hotels, after hotels, and every street behind it is hotels or guest houses. One of the things that Blackpool is really well known for are stag and hen nights. Some of the hotels won't accept people on stag and hen nights, but probably 10 or 15 are going on at any one time in Blackpool over the weekends. You'll find that a lot of them will visit the Manchester behind us, and there's plenty of nightclubs in Blackpool as well. As well as, obviously, you've got the roller coasters to play on and whatnot. Blackpool is one of those unique destinations that's busy all year round. Even in the winter, you probably only get a few weeks where there's not something happening here. And that is one of the old trams. They have a few that run up and down. Mainly it's new ones that are like any modern bus. Very, very comfortable. But these are the old trams. I remember them from coming to visit here in the 70s. And there's Central Pier. A little bit different to South Pier. We'll cover that in a minute. And that's what it's famous for at the moment, is that big wheel on it. You're starting to get all the amusements now, the uh, seaside resort type shops on the seafront. Many of the amusement arcades have cafes inbuilt to them, but I'll show you one that's well worth a visit in a bit. And you'll hear the people playing bingo and whatnot in the distance. But the promenade's a nice wide one. So you've got plenty of space to walk along without having to be harassed by those sort of things. probably even hear them at this distance away calling out the bingo numbers. And yes, that's my daughter with her head stuck in her phone. And here come a few more of the clan. 
along with the pug, which keeps making that loud breathing noise. There's Thomas, we've just seen Layla, and that's Eloise, my wife. The other two big ones are around at the shops. Over the past few years, these things have propped up on uh, the seafront over the last 15, 20 years. Some really, really good ones. Some of them look a little bit on the gaudy side, but anyway. Central Pier. Let's have a look around that. Like most of the pier, slot machines at the entrance, but you can walk around the side of it to get a better view of what's going on without having the kids going through there, asking for coins left, right and centre to play the machines. You can see, just like the other one, they've got some shops and things to play as you walk in. Very similar in that respect. Here's James, who's joined us for the rest of it. Serena, the eldest, is about somewhere. Because we're in a fun fair and they play popular music, I've had to quieten it down a bit and play something over it, purely and simply because of copyright rules. As you can see, they've got some uh, fairly fun rides at the end of this. You forget that you're on a pier. And they've got some for the little kids as well. and even some themed toilets. They do like to have their fun, don't they? And then the classic, let's have your photo taken looking absolutely ridiculous through a picture. Every time at that pool. Typical British seaside resort postcard from the 1970s and 80s. Bit of fun anyway. And you can see the size of the beach and there's the North Pier, which is nearest one to the actual Blackpool Tower. Your classic hooker ducks dolls and that sort of thing at the end. Hooker duck, if you don't know what it is in other countries, you literally have a rubber duck with a hook on it. You pick it up with a stick and you win a prize which is about half the value of the uh, the actual cost of playing the game. Great for little kids because I think they've really won something.
and you can see how far that beach stretches. That's looking back to South Pier. These seats could do with a bit of a look of paint, but never mind. Even at the end of the pier, you're not right up to the sea level, whereas the water really does come up all this way and you can be walking on the pier with the water between the boards that you're walking on. You can see it through. A place to buy your Blackpool Rock. Madame Tussauds Waxworks there. If you've got time, meet your celebrities. And over there, you can see the Sea Life Centre. We do actually have a, a thing you can buy for both. That's Coral Island, which is an amusement arcade. It's got a fantastic little cafe in it. One of the most unusual things that Blackpool has now gained is right on the seafront, that's right, a wedding chapel. So you come to Blackpool, you get drunk, you party, and you leave married. Can't be bad, can it? And if you're wondering what the elephant thing is, it's a thing that's all over Blackpool at the moment. And basically, it's for charity donations. Now in this area, on Blackpool Seafront, between the central and northern pier, is a vast area. And what they occasionally do is block it out and get big shows in here. The iconic feature of Blackpool, the tower. It may look as was this something that was produced before the one in Paris? No. I used to think so as a kid. For in actual fact, it was based on that. As you can see from the bottom though, there's a vast building underneath and that has become world famous for ballroom dancing. It's also got many, many other things in there to visit. Uh, the dungeons, which are a bit like Madame Two Swords, but it's a bit more grotesque. There's all sorts going on. And right underneath that, the seafront is one of the more unusual things but this if you recognize any comedians on this list there are quite a few these are people who have starred on the stage around that pool Yes, they put benches in from some of the ways, but most of them comedians. One or two have played comical roles or have been world famous. All been in Blackpool. But I'll just stop there. I'm not going to show you all of them, but let's just walk around a bit and see if there's any you recognise. The names on this list, some of them go back to the 1920s. Many of them are still touring today. There are Americans, British, obviously mainly British, but... Uh, some big, big names here from uh, 1950s, 60s films, British TV. And although this place is surrounded by names, you've then got comments that they're known for all over this area. Fantastic. We'll just walk over a few, see if you recognise it.
but that's where the Ministry of Silly Walks is. And uh, another Monty Python, because yes. How about this one? Customer, morning, waitress, morning. What you got? Well, there's egg bacon, egg sausage bacon, egg and spam, egg bacon and spam, egg bacon sausage and spam, spam bacon sausage and spam, spam egg spam spam bacon and spam. Spam, 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 egg, bacon, and spam. Spam, 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 bacon, spam, 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 and spam. Or loves to thermidor, a crotteurs with a more made sauce, garnished with truffle pâté, and an egg on top. And spam. Monty's fi- Monty Python's Flying Circus, fantastic. If you don't know what spam is, look it up. So now we're going to go to the final of the three piers, which is just up here. Oh, by the way, if you come into Blackpool, I say this on every video that we see them at, right over there on the corner is five letters. And yes, there may be better fish and chips elsewhere, but these are consistently good. So you go to one or you go to any. You're going to get decent fish and chips. I'm not saying they're always going to be the best. I'm not saying they're always going to be the worst. But if we look straight ahead, you'll see behind that scaffolding, Papa's Fish and Chip Shop. Now, most of the people will be at that end of the pool. This end is more the party, party end. Over there, you've got your pole dancing club, and there's a few here. Next to it is Yates's. Don't tell anybody it's Yates. Pronounced, spelt Yates, but everybody calls it Yates's. Don't ask me why. It's a pub. And also at the end is one of the most famous ones in Blackpool. The Metropole. Been owned by Butlins and then a number of other companies. Hopefully it's going to reopen soon because it, I've stayed there and it was at one point a fantastic hotel right at the end of the Golden Mile. Fantastic place, but like everything, it wears, it gets tatty, you get owners that don't spend the money on it, and it soon becomes just another old hotel. Over here, you've got your nightclubs, your takeaways, all that sort of thing. That's this end of the place. Now we're going to North Pier, which isn't as busy as some of the others. You can see you've got your amusements at the beginning of it. I'm going to just walk through and just show you the sights of it so you've got an idea about it. I do like this though, Bloom Bar. Not necessarily the bar itself, but the colouring looks the right age of the pier itself. North Pier was actually made in 1862, so it's been here for quite some time, and it's a quiet pier. Yes, it's still up here like all the others. You don't see what I mean. You even get a train to go to the end of it if you want. Just seems so much more Victorian. It's getting a bit darker now and the lights are coming on to flood it so you can see where you're going. This is what I imagine a Victorian pier to be more like. Got the seats at the side, maybe something in the middle. 
you seem so much more relaxed. There's the Metropole. The addiction needle, or whatever you like to call it. Even the sea's coming in now. Look at that beach, Golden Sands. We look at the other side. When I say there's plenty of sand around here, you'll see what I mean. Definitely the quietest of the three piers. Much more relaxed. So I hope you've enjoyed your walk around with me through Blackpool. My feet are worn out. Time for me to go home, I think. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>